No, but Isa has extra knowledge. Isa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا قَتَلُهُ وَمَا صَلَبُهُ وَلَكِنْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah didn't say that by Yahya. لا 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 أخي أرزح هذا هذا سؤال سوري وما لكم ألا تنفقوا في سبيل الله ولله ميراث السماوات الأرض لا يستوي منكم من أنفق قبل الفتح وقاتل أولئك أعظم درجة من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا وكل وعد الله الحسنى والله بما تعلمون خبير والله سبيك رباط إذ دموج الأنصار ما كان الله سبحانه وتعالى ما كان لمؤمن ولا لمؤمنة إذا قضى الله ورسوله من أمر إذا الله gives the legislation إن إذا مس نانا وين نانا نانا you for the messengers لا لا مواجه نانا ده 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 لا لا سيستر ناو يو ار ميكنج اب يور اون ثينكس ار يو افيغ ميك اب يور اون قران سون والعياذ بالله بارت از ذيس از ذا وي ليف لوك الله نوز ابوت هيم سيلف اند ذا مسج اوف الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم نوت الله بيت ذن اني وان اوس اند وات وي ساي الا تسجد لي ما خلقت بيدي اشاعر ذا سي باور ذا ترو أشاعر أشاعر. 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 لا نفرق بين أحد مسؤوله وقالوا سمعنا وطعنا ربنا وفانك ربنا وإليك مصير الله ساز ونضع الموازين القسط ليوم القيامة فلا تظلم نفس شيئا وإن كان مثقال حبة من خردل أتينا بها وكفى بنا حاسبين Yeah. Okay, so, okay, cool. Um, where does it say in the Quran that jinn possessed people? Uh, the, the verse that in the Quran Allah mentioned is that in Surah Al-Abad al-Riba, that it's about jinn. That's talking about yeah. the brother, not about No, no, no. Allah has given the example that how a person involved in riba is like someone being possessed by jinn. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? Now, the beginning of this video showcased a series of fumbling mistakes that our brother Shamsi had with the Quran al Karim reciting. Now, if you wanted to, and I've already done that myself, about myself, one could find the same thing about me. Now, why am I bringing this to your attention? Why am I bringing this to the table? The reason why I bring this to your attention is because brother Shamsi, he's a, he's a great da'iyah when it comes to bringing people to Islam. I don't think there's any discussion about that. He comes, he's been resilient, he's been coming to speak his corner on a weekly basis, he's been, you know, doing a good job. Before I used to go there, you know, many people don't know this, but he's actually much older than I am. Maybe six years older or something. I don't know how old he is. He's going on to 40 or something. So the, the man has been, he's around, he's been, you know, he's been doing dawah for a long time. And credit where credit is due. Like, to be honest with you, he's done such a good service bringing people to Islam that that can't be disregarded in these discourses. So we have to start by being honest and being fair-minded, even with people that maybe we don't agree with fully, yeah? However... Brother, when it comes to things like Bab al Asma al Ahkam, labeling people, taking the honor away from Muslims, my question is with this level of recitational uh, inaccuracy, okay, is, especially considering your, your Arabic is your first language, ahi, and you had to learn English clearly, like you came from Algeria or whatever, you had to learn English. If this is your level, what gives you the right to make tabdi on people? Who gave you the authority from your scholars? To come out and say this person, Fulan Fulani, is a Mubtada, who you have done to. I'm not just talking about me and Ali Dawa and Abdul Rahman Hassan and this Abu Taymiyyah and uh, Abu, Abu Osama al Dhahabi and even people that are like openly Salafi, like clearly, like, you know, following the Lejna to the T, the Lejna of Saudi Arabia and stuff like that. You consider them to be Mubtada. Who gave you the authority? If this is your level of education, and considering the fact that you, you're not, from what I understand, like, you're not trained in an Islamic seminary. You're not trained in, 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 a, in a thing like that. And you're making these mistakes. Me and you both know, if this is our, let's, let's not say your level. Let me, be, let me be fair to myself as well. If this is our level, 
Where do we think we have the audacity to come out and say this person's a mubtada, this person's this, this person's that? In Bab Asma' ul Ahkam, when there's Shubha, who gave us the authority? Who gave us the authority, bro? Why don't you make a video just like your teacher Abu Khadija did when he told us that he studied a couple of books here and there? Why don't you make a vid video telling us where you studied? If you are coming out making tabdiyah of in the human beings who are in the da'wah, many of them way more senior than me and you, what is your level of qualification? Please don't run away from this. Please, I beg you, make a video and say, this is where I studied. Because from what I understand, from my knowledge, you studied on telelinks with some mashayikh in Jaizan in Saudi Arabia. Fine. You studied here and there, little knowledge here and there, in prison, you studied, you whatever. You, you, you memorized some, some verses, you done some things. Halas, yani, that, that has equipped you to give really good da'wah to some people and to bring them to Islam. But has it equipped you to make tabdi'ah of people? That's my first question. Please, I'm not going to say be a man because that would be emasculating to you. And I like you, bro, because me and you are friends. Like, deep down, me and you like each other, innit? But me and you are, uh, you know, we, we're helping each other in life. I believe we're helping each other, bro. We're taking us delusions of grandeur, the positive illusions that we both have. Because when you're thrust into the public limelight and stuff like that, and we might think we, we get delusions of grandeur, we're helping each other combat that for each other. So therefore, we like each other, I'm sure. But despite that, I'm saying that, where do we get the audacity to do stuff like that? Where back in the days, fatwa, like the big, the salaf used to be, uh, Imam Malik used to be sweating and say, I don't know with fatwas because he knew the implications of giving. Why are we so, uh, yani, emboldened to give fatwas like that? That's my first question. I beg you come out and tell us what you, where you studied. If, you're, if this is the, the knowledge you're given and disseminating and give, come out, I beg you tell me where you studied. Number two, I gave you a challenge and you guys a challenge eight months ago. Ten months ago, in fact. Ten months ago, Aki. And considering your teacher spent hours and hours trying to refute me. Out, he spent 600, your teacher, your fundamental teacher. I went back and forth with him. And he produced 600 pages about me. He scoured my videos, bro. He watched all of my Speaker's Corner videos. I, he was time stamping the videos, Aki. He did me a favor, bro. This man did me a favor. Scouring my video, 600 pages. Ahi, this is the kind... you got... Uh, uh, money is being paid so that you can look at my Muhammad Hijab's videos and scour them and Ali Dawa's videos and those people's videos. I gave you 10 months, Ahi. 10 months to just give me one example where Sheikh Rabia Ibn Hadi Al-Madkhali, a senior citizen living in Saudi Arabia, a scholar in his own right, in Hadith. Where he he made a proclamation about about bid'ah, this person's the muqtada, and you've opposed that. The reason why this is fundamental, I told you before and I'll tell you again, is because Ibn Taymiyyah said, whoever ja'ala shakhsan min al-ashkhas, ya ghayr Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whoever makes an individual from the individuals, aside from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Men wa'alahu kana min ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, whoever is in line with him, whoever allies with him is from ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, and whoever goes against him is not from Ahl Sunnah. This person is a Hizbi, basically. It's been the, the Ahl Tafarruq, the, the sectarians, the Hizbis. So it's important for us to, to see whether or not you're consistent with, yeah, the so-called Salafi principles, going back to the Salaf and so on. If not, you are, if if that you're not a Khalafi, in fact, that you you follow the Khalaf, the people that came after. So, question is, give me one example, and you did not be you and your entire organization have spent. Time and effort into Muhammad, the shakhsi of Muhammad Hijab for some reason, you have not been able to provide one example of that. So should, can we just concede here that you've lost? Can we just concede here that according to Ibn Taymiyyah, that you would be considered the Hizbi? That according to him, you'd be someone considered an individual who is indulged in Hizbiyyah and Tafarruq? I'm not making tabdiyah of you, just to be clear. But you're indulging in the act of bid'ah. You can, as you know, indulge in an act without being the thing that the act entails. Like you can be, you can in, engage in kufr but not be a kafir. Can we just admit that? Once we've admitted that, we can move on to the next question, which is this. You came online and you were talking about philosophy, 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 philosophy. Then we found a clip of you, brother, saying clearly, very openly, that if you make an argument from the Quran, 
it would be a logical argument from the Quran, it would be circular reasoning. Therefore, you need to make an argument outside the Quran. So we said that you've been blasting us because we've been using critical inquiry and philosophy for so long. In fact, this has been a staple part of your stock criticism against Muhammad Hajab and co. Yet, you have not been able to answer why you yourself said that you have to, you know, you are indicating that you should be using arguments outside of the Quran. So these two challenges are met. Now you're coming with a video that's two years old or maybe more or less, I don't know. That was in a live stream that was not even on my channel. Where I was simply saying about Ibn Abdul Wahhab that he's not Shaksiya Muqaddasa, he's not a holy figure, that his books are not acts of works of scholarship, and that if they didn't exist, we would still be guided. And you have a problem with all that? Brother, you've got bigger fish to fry. Brother, you've got you've got serious interrogations to reply to here. So I'm not you know happy with uh, the way you're de dealing with this thing, to be honest with you. You should answer my questions before you I've answered yours. I've answered yours. Now, that is, I'm doubling down. I agree, brother. I'm saying to you, yes, I am saying that in regards to knowing the As'il al-Thalatha in the Qabr, the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad will give you more uh, extensive uh, detail than the book of Usul al-Thalatha, which is two pages long, which anybody can memorize. So, what's the problem now? What are you going to go now? That's it. That's my. You got a problem with that? Okay, fine. You got a problem. You got your way. I've got my way. You've got your opinion. I've got my opinion. Now answer my questions. Now answer my questions. So that's what I'm trying to say, bro. And if this was a hajj mulaha, if this was a serious thing that needed to be answered, why did you spend two years doing it? Why did you spend two years before? And we know you guys scour our videos. Why did you spend two years? Is it because the algorithm was up? I'm asking you a question. I can be honest. Is it because? Okay, this guy had like three or four big events or this and that. The press is mentioning his name. The Google trends are going up. Now, it's mentioned Muhammad Hijab's name. But because with all due respect, that's not really a consistent method of refutation. If you are concerned about people not going into what you deem as bid'ah, then why don't you give an equal treatment to all the so-called deviant sects and individuals that you give to me? Is the Shaksi of Muhammad Hijab so worth you and your organization's time that you would dedicate the majority output on him and Ali Dawa? What about the Dio Bandis and the Brelvis? You might say, okay, well, you know, um, what do you call it? They, they're known to be deviants, blah, blah, blah. We've refuted them here. But no, what I'm saying to you is if you consider them to be deviants, then why have you spent so much a disproportionate amount of time on Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa than a whole group with millions of people following it? Now you might say, well, because the Dalal is more clear, blah, blah, blah. Then I will say to you, what about Sajid Lipham? What about Abdurrahman Hassan? What about those guys? I personally believe, bro, I'll be honest with you, because the levels are so much higher. I'm not going to say with Sajid Lipham, with due respect to him. He's a, mashallah, very good brother. And a good, I'm not trying to start nothing with him because, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to squash it with him. Yeah. But I'm saying, Sajid Lipham, you haven't refuted. Why have you refuted him? Is it because the enemy of the enemy is my friend? Is it because of strategic movements? But if you are a consistent madhalite, or let's not call you that, a follower of Rabi Abdul Hadi, then people who are connected to individuals who praise Ali Halabi should be refuted. According to your logic and stuff like that, bro. So what I'm saying is, why you, the reason why I believe you haven't spent as much time on someone like Abdul Rahman Hassan is because the people know, Akhi, in terms of Islamic knowledge, we're not talking about the multidisciplinarian Knowledge and philosophy knowledge and logic knowledge and muqanat al adyan We are talking about the madda of Islamic knowledge. Brother, there's levels. And people will know that you can't actually mention this guy without looking like he's inferior in a, from a logic, logic, uh, knowledge perspective. Therefore, I think you're scared of him. I think you're scared of people like that. I actually, that's my postulation, Akhi. I'll be honest with you. Because it doesn't make sense that other individuals, claimants of Salafism, like Abdurrahman Hassan, yeah, you're not you're not trying to refute them as much as you're trying to refute Muhammad Hijab, and uh, they are calling people to their brand of Salafism, which is different to yours. So I think the enemy of the enemy is my friend is the motto that you're going with, and you're jumping on the algorithm and you're playing the strategy, but you are breaking all of the principles of the Madhalite tradition, if you want to call it that. Why? Because why are you debating with the Mubtadi'a? Why are you engaging in uh, debates with uh, the Shia every week, and uh, not every week, but uh, in Speaker's Corner? These are the things that your teachers have been warning against for years. And that's why I think you're going to be dropped, brother. 
And so you might as well get ready for that because you're going to get dropped by them. You're going to get dropped by them, bro, because you're already putting them in disrepute. Every time you go on your adventures and your expeditions, their names get dragged into it. Why should they tolerate you anymore? So they're about to drop you, Wahi. So I, I recommend to you, brother, that you do tenazum. That you come down and say, you know what? Before I get dropped, you, you, you take your own self-dignity and say, look, I'm not going to get dropped by these guys. I'm going to come out and just be wasati now. I invite you to wasatiya. I invite you to the way of the, the, the middle ground, Ahi, where you're not doing tabdiya, where you're not doing uh, taking away people's or Muslims' honor with no authority. With no authority, Ahi. I invite you to that way. And then we can then we can finally unite, brother. Because imagine, if you, with all your, mashallah, your talent and your ability to, you know, convey and your, your strong strong personality, if you come in, yeah, and we do ihtiban of each other, and we, we, we unite with each other, wouldn't that be something that the enemies of Islam, that you think that they would find that it would be a catastrophe for them, Akhi? To be honest with you, I think it would be a catastrophe for them. And what they're offering you, Akhi, I'll be honest with you now, from what I understand, they're going to drop you soon. I think you should take your dignity and say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to be part of this organization anymore, bro. I think that's what you should do. That's my advice to you, Habibi. And you know me and you probably have each other's best interest. More than I believe your teachers have your best interest. I'll be honest with you. With that, I conclude with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.